I can't believe that I'm about to say this about a Razer headset, but after 4 months, I'm still surprised at how great these pilot looking headsets from Razer sound in games, movies and music. It's almost a perfect wireless headset for me if it wasn't for the buggy THX software. Hi, what's up everybody, I'm Edward, and in today's episode of Is It Worth Your Money series, I'm going to share with you the features that I loved about Razer's $180 wireless headset, the Razer Black Shark V2 Pro, and my 4 months usage feedback, including why I think this is one of the best headsets in the Razer family. And as this is a long detailed review, please feel free to skip around with the timestamps below, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already to stay updated, and let's tune in the details. Starting with the unboxing, upon opening the large box, you're immediately greeted with the Razer Black Shark V2 Pro headset. The first thing I noticed after picking up the headset was how light and premium this headset felt, especially comparing to my previous 6 years old Razer Manowar Res headset. Weighing at only 320 grams, the build materials mostly consist of matte black plastic with 4 wire hinges holding the ear cups, and in my opinion, feels a lot more sturdy compared to a majority of plastic headsets. So, just to be sure, and with my fingers crossed, I decided to do a twist test. And it turns out, the headset is way more flexible than it looks, so that is a huge relief for my doubt of the Razer Black Shark V2 Pro's build durability. I mean, if I were to do the same test on the $170 Razer Manowar headset, the top plastic bit would have most likely broken off already. Now. As for the other contents in the box, there is a surprisingly large 2.4GHz USB-A adapter compared to Razer's other wireless adapters, probably so that it won't get lost that easily as the headset does not have an adapter storage compartment. There is also a soft fabric pouch for storing your headphones that I think is too thin to properly protect the headset from scratches while traveling, a 3.5mm jack cable that is nicely covered with fabric and measures at 1.3 meters long a USB-A to micro USB cable for charging that is also covered with fabric and measures at 1.5 meters long. And lastly, the detachable headset microphone. Okay, moving back to the headset, all of the controls and buttons are all located on the left ear cup. There is a volume dial that provides a gentle click feedback when turning past the middle point to make it easier to know how loud your headset is at, which is a neat feature. A press and hold power button, a mute button, a USB micro USB charging port, a LED indicator light, a 3.5mm port for using it in wired mode, and another 3.5mm port for the detachable headset microphone. And while we are on the topic about the microphone, the audio quality of your voice picked up by this cardioid microphone has improved quite a lot compared to all of Razer's previous headsets. It sounds very clear and almost natural, and performs well in filtering out most of the background noise. However, it still has a tendency to pick up some sounds from clicky mechanical keyboards and tends to add a little more bass to your voice, but that can be minimized and adjusted via software settings in Synapse. There is also no flashy RGB this time around, but that's acceptable because I cannot see it anyway. And as the ear cups do not swivel or fold, so it will take up quite some space to bring around and it's not comfortable to wear around your neck. But when worn over the ears, the headset is extremely snug and comfortable thanks to its soft fabric flow knit or mesh fabric memory foam ear cushions and provides a very good external sound isolation. And my favorite part is the thicker than average inner padding that prevents my ears from hurting during extended wear. But because the fabric ear paddings are not removable, I'm guessing that over time, if you have like really oily skin, the ear cups will start to become filthy and they cannot be replaced. So you will need to wipe it down regularly to keep it clean and fresh. As for the wireless adapter, it is very versatile as it is compatible with PCs, PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5, and the Nintendo Switch in docked mode. But Xbox and Switch Lite owners, however, will not be able to use this headset wirelessly and can only connect to the Xbox or Nintendo Switch Lite via the 3.5mm jack. Though, when using with consoles, there will not be any virtual surround as it is only available via Synapse on PC. So, after having used this headset 2-3 nights every week for the past 4 months, 
I have to say that this is probably the best headset from Razer that I have ever used. Not only do they sound really, really good, but they are also really, 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 really comfortable. So comfortable that at times I really forget that I'm wearing a headset. This is particularly thanks to the lightweight and design of this headset, which makes it very easy to adjust and stay on firmly without any wobble. And on top of that, the flow knit memory foam ear cushions with soft inner paddings also adds a lot to the comfort factor for both when I have my glasses on and off. And during my 4-6 to six hours of multiplayer Call of Duty sessions, I did not feel any heat buildup or pressure points, and that is really really awesome because my ears tend to hurt after a few hours when using other headsets. Though, I want to point out here that I did come across a couple of user feedback saying that their units are a bit loose on the wire hinges and tend to come loose after adjusting. And also, those with smaller heads tend to find the headset not to clamp on firmly enough, so that's something to keep in mind as this is not a one-size-fit-all design. Although, I did not have any of these issues that other users are saying, the only issues that I had constantly during these past 4 months was with the THX spatial audio. When playing games, listening to music, and watching movies, every time that I turn on the THX special, spatial audio in Synapse, the audio quality drops quite a bit and the whole sound stage sounds flat. There was no virtual surround or any sense of directional audio. And when off, however, the virtual surround comes back and directional audio becomes existent again. So I decided to leave the slider in the off position. But no matter how many times I try to reinstall Synapse, the problem is always there. So I'm not sure if this is an issue with my software or my computer. But apart from that issue, the audio quality in general was great for gaming and media consumption. With the added option of an equalizer via Synapse to fine tune the audio to your likings. And at high volumes, the 50mm Triforce titanium drivers did not have any audio distortion as in-game footsteps and gunshots were clearly audible among explosion and gunfire sounds from other players in Call of Duty. And in games that support virtual surround, the directional audio was also pretty accurate adding to the immersion factor. As for the battery life, I was able to use it for an average of 6 days on a full charge, averaging 3.5 hours per night before hearing the low battery warning tone. But unlike Razer's other wireless peripherals, there is no exact battery left percentage on Synapse to let you know how much charge you have left. You only get a battery icon with an approximate charge left, but luckily it only takes about 3 hours to fully charge the Black Shark V2 Pro from MT and the headset works while charging so if you do run out of battery in the middle of a session, you can always charge up back up without interrupting your gaming session. So. Overall, I think the Razer Black Shark V2 Pro is a fantastic, well-designed wireless headset. But because of its lack of portability and connectivity options, I feel that it is mainly catered toward PC gamers who mainly game at home. And due to its high price tag of $180, console gamers might want to consider other alternatives that have better support for consoles. Also, if you are on a budget and don't mind running a cable from your PC to your head, you could also consider the wired Black Shark V2 headset which costs $80 less and has identical features as the V2 Pro and there's also the recently released Razer Barracuda X which I will share with you in a couple of months so stay subscribed. Alright, thank you as always for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them below in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them all. And if you enjoyed today's video, hit that like button as it will help this channel a lot more than you know it and I'll see you again in the next video.